Genie grind and watch him get it rich, huh? Remember when I said I hit a lick, huh? I don't really wanna fuck the bitch, what? Willie went and made another hit, okay, like Prada on my motherfucking kid, huh? Louis on my motherfucking hip, huh? Curry how I dunk, no switch, hey, fuck it, gonna fuck that bitch, hey, if you ain't gonna fuck with me, you a dumb fuck, uh? Put up a hit up, I feel like one punch, uh? Look at my bank and I'm getting dumb rich, uh? And I'm gonna count it up till a hundred, uh? Hello world, I'm Wife Studia, and today we're doing What If Decker Was Thunderbolt Thompson? So we begin this off when he was five. Um, he started as normally, I would say. He, he takes on a much more aggressive mood. Basically, Bakugo, but uh, stupider, basically. It's just a form of Bakugo. He's not about Bakugo's brother, per se, but he is mistaken for it a lot of the times. Accumulating a lot of facial features just like him, but seeming aged, however stupider. So, once this happens, he turns five. And once he turns five, he gains a quirk. It was called Fury. The, the villain that it was connected to before was called Rampage, a, a red monster that would only stop once All Might came. That would basically just one-shot him, as it was told. Stopping his, rampage, his endless rampage through towns and just destroying businesses in general. No control. Basically, he's kind of outcasted a little bit for this. However, government programs have seen this before and have seen kids like him turn into absolute monsters. They're not going to let that happen again. They initiate him into sort of a government program from home, one that would make, force him to work out every day. He be, um, however, he's mad about this, as he really wants to go to the actual thing. Again, he's completely stupid and just follows orders whenever he hears them. He gets obsessed with, you know, being in the actual military instead of online. However, he sticks to, to what they tell him, and, you know, um, becomes much more disciplined in, in the long run. So once he turns around 10, he starts to unlock um, more of this quirk, being able to bulk up a little bit, causing a lot of the people around him to be scared of him. However, his uh, general mood and just stupidity kind of eases them a little bit. So once he turns around 14, he unlocks a sort of way to bulk up where his arms would grow to almost two times their size, allowing the rest of his body to also do that. However, his, his skin turned a little bit red, a uh, red hue to it. And whenever he would breathe out, he, he said that he felt like he was breathing out fire. However, there was nothing there, as if he just ate red hot chili peppers. So once he, tur once he turns 15, he's inducted into um, a protection program. One that is a much different change from, you know, his usual military uh, The drill sergeant that met him online was changed to a helpful advisor that would simply tell him, hey, maybe you should work out today, you know, instead of, get up, maggot, you know? He, he didn't like this change exactly. However, there was one huge change that they were telling him about um, one of the days, that actually the people that were there before, they are the same as now he's going to be, he's now tasked with protecting kids. Um, but, you know, maybe he should be a hero, you know? That would stop villains from becoming, you know, um, villains. <laughs> villain, villain kids with villain quirks would stop becoming, you know, villains because, you know, they're heroes now and they get hope. And this is how, like, the, the mind control guy got into, you know, uh, the normal, you know, UA. That's how he got in. Not because of, you know, anything really else. <laughs> So basically, uh, he accepts this reluctantly, as he doesn't exactly love these new counselors, as he has to take the UA exam now. He's actually pretty good at this. He, bashing all these things, he starts to laugh as he's just bashing through all of the stuff. He never really has an interaction with Uraka or Ida, as he doesn't really care. He's just like, when do we beat up shit? I just want to get to that. And, Bak and Bakugo kind of agrees with him. He never thought he would be agreeing with the freak. So basically, yeah, no, he just bashes through everything. Um, unlocking a lot more of his quirk because he was not really allowed to use it before. But now he's unlocking a lot more abilities through it. Uh, like a super long jump that he never knew he could do. And he's discovering this as he's fighting. He gets very excited about this and just starts laughing while bashing through all of the skulls of the freaking robots. You know, sending a few of them up in the air. They get like sliced in half by a freaking Ida, like cross check kick which he's actually impressed by. He likes Ida's mentality of, you know, kind of a militaristic um, seriousness, where, you know, he's 
He's a lot like a drill sergeant, how he would yell and stuff. And he, he was like, I want to be that guy's friend. <laughs> That's how he becomes friends with Ida. So they continue on just bashing through all the robots until the zero pointer comes in. Now, Uraka screams for somebody to help her. Ida does not help her. So, of course, Deku has to stand up for her. However, he does not really care about her and goes straight for, a, for like, just starts plowing through the legs of the zero pointer. Just destroying um, one of its legs and grabbing onto the next one. And then lifting it up into the air, make it fall over to onto its back. Laughing the whole entire time. Not maniacally, but everybody takes this maniacally, that's for sure. Because he's just so excited for this power and stuff. He's like, maybe they'll accept me into the military this time. <sighs> I asked for a gun, after all. Guess they didn't give us that for this. Oh, <laughs> and then he looks down, like, seeing Rocky. He's like, sorry, little girl. I almost stepped on you there. She's like, it's okay. Who are you? What pro hero are you? Like, I will be your fan base. <laughs> like, for saving my life. He's like, oh, I'm not a pro hero. What are you talking about? Do I look like one? And he like flexes a little bit. She's like, oh my god. Because he's just this gigantic, bulky, red, fiery guy. And she's just like freaked the fuck out as she remembers, you know, Rampage, the, the fiery villain. You know, and she, this reminds her too much of this and she faints. Basically getting rid of all the score that he would have had if he had saved her normally. And he's like, it isn't my fault though. She, put, she fainted on her own, right? All I did was flex. They're like, that's impossible. He like, um, he bulks up his arm and flexes a little bit. They're like, okay, me, mm, hmm, hmm, yeah, well, it's understandable now. So he he gets into UA easily. He boasts about this a little bit until he meets Bakugo again. Bakugo says that he's also gone to 1A. As you know, they meet eyes. You know, they're like, so we're in the same group, eh? <laughs> How about a little test run to see if you actually fit in, freak? As ba um, Deku's like, uh, fucking, um, Deku says, I'm now na known as Thunderbolt. That'll be my hero name, and you should call me as such. Really? So the freak's got a name, eh? <laughs> Never thought that would happen. Uh, Deku's like, yeah, well, fucking Christ, just fight me then. Come on. Don't be a pussy. You know, Bakugo's like, oh, really now? They just start, like, throwing hands and shit. And Bakugo, um, if Bakugo gets hit by, like, one of the punches that, that freaking Thunderbolt is throwing out, I mean, it's in shockwaves, so I, I really doubt Bakugo's gonna survive, like, two of those things. He gets punched once in the chest after blasting um, the arm that had punched him. Deku's rearing from that from that explo explosion on his arm, which singes his skin and like makes it like part of his his fingers, you know, crispy, which is not a good feeling. However, Bakugo is like gasping for air as he just got the wind knocked out of him. So they count it as a draw, as then it becomes the next day, and they go to 1A. Hey, that rhymed. Anyways, uh, <laughs> that was actually pretty cool. Anyways. Um, they basically go to UA, and they lock eyes again as they're, as, De um, freaking Thunderbolt's about to sit down. He strokes his mustache as, you know, there's an intensity in the air. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, Deku has a mustache this time. The same that Thunderbolt has. Um. And it's kind of the same as the one that Thunderbolt has there and stuff. So, that's pretty funny. I mean... You see that gigantic red guy just running around with that mustache. <laughs> You're like, yo, that's pretty funny. I think it's funny anyways. I think that should be his hero name, though. Nah, nah, nah. That'd be too silly. Anyways, he continues on, you know, just like this intensity in the air stops everybody from talking. As Bakugo and De um, Deku's kind of rage are starting to boil. And then Aizawa gets up, kind of breaking this silence. And, uh sort of interrupt before freaking Bakugo could th even throw a punch and just says, okay, physical test now. Thank you for being quiet. <laughs> and they all do their physical test. I feel like Bakugo, um, Deku just basically destroys every single test. I mean, his, his, his power is basically just all physical upgrades that allow him to do everything there, just times 100. <laughs> so basically, yeah, he just destroys everything. And uh, Bakugo says, like, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. Like, how freaking bitchy ass he is. I, uh, I'm getting too mad right now. Anyways, Bakugo basically starts picking a fight with, Bak with Deku about, you know, freaking how it doesn't count. He's cheating by using that damned, like, 
abomination of a quirk, he calls it. They start wanting to fight. However, Aizawa um, stops both of them from using their quirks, which makes Deku shrivel down to, like, a pin. <laughs> he's, like, really small now. Like, he's not even that old, and he hasn't trained that much with his body. Like, he just goes down, because like, he's always accessing a little bit of that power. So he's, he's, he looks very bulky and threatening, but <laughs> if you were to take away that quirk, he's just a normal kid. So everybody's surprised by the fact that he's all shriveled up and stuff. No, like, is that what he's like without, you know, the whole buff up? <laughs> like, what? He's like, shit, why didn't you do that, Aizawa? You, I will get revenge on you. And I was like, no, you won't. <laughs> and then I feel like a couple weeks go by, Deku is pretty bored of his classes and shit. And then uh, um, Bakugo keeps on teasing um, Deku about the, about the tie. Like, if he could shot him, why did he lose? I was at a tie. Um... So then, the hero versus villains. I would. I feel like that Aizawa gets the tension in the room, and says that they need to really just like get rid of this tension, and um, decides to do a heroes versus villains test. So basically, Bakugo is paired up with Ida, Deku with um, Thunderbolt with Uraka, and Uraka says that they really need a plan. He says, "Oh yeah, right, plans. Forgot. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm supposed to be the military general. Why didn't I think of one? Okay." I'll distract Bakugo and Ida, because they gave me this little freaking pistol. Why, I asked for a freaking rocket launcher, but apparently I get a freaking pistol. Whatever. I'll distract both of them, and you go for the bomb. Easy, right? She's like, yeah, um, it's a plan. Can't say it's not a plan. And he's like, good, let's go. She's like, it hasn't started yet. He just, like, starts walking straight in without the, without them even starting the timer. Because he's insane, basically. And Bakugo sees them walking in, so he goes anyways. And the teachers are, like, out of control by this point. They can't even stop them. They're just, like, walking straight towards each other. As then Bakugo throws the first punch, which instantly gets deflected straight into the wall, punching straight into the wall. Um, Deku um, drags his face through the... Um, picks up his face, pull, um, dragging him straight through the... Um, straight through the ground up into the... up into the concrete of the left wall. Throwing him as hard as he can against the wall, Bakugo... Um, pretends to be injured, and then he releases the two clips on his arms as um, Deku was about to go for like a headshot with a freaking haymaker straight to the face against the wall. Um, Bakugo just puts up both of his hands, taking out the clips on his grenades on his arms, blowing just the absolute shit out of Bak out of Deku. Luckily, Deku had activated a lot of his quirk to defend himself. However, his, he, he's still like his is still just destroyed, and there's like a few pounds of muscle that were just lit up, basically. And when he, re he can't really hold that form anymore, and he returns back to his normal form as a normal kid. And basically, well, he has like a, he has like a what that looks like on freaking All Might. He has the same thing on his, on his, you know, chest. So he goes up, and like, <laughs> Bakugo had just been thrown through the ground, and then thrown up against a concrete wall, not only concussing him, but basically knocking him out halfway. Which um, Deku uh, handcuffs him as Deku just falls straight to the ground. Um, Uraka tries to bring a um, uh, uh, freaking thunderbolt up to the up to the thing and then wakes him back up. As he pops up very energetically, he's like, "All I needed was some sleep. Let's go." She's like, "You lost like a few pounds of muscle there. How are you alive?" He's like, "It singed. It singed the cut. I mean, it singed <laughs> the fire from it." Um, Freaking cured the the wound, so now I'm all fine. She's like, that's not how that works. Do you have regeneration? He's like, I never heard of it. Never had it. Let's go. He just dashes straight at Ida. Ida had heard and seen the gigantic explosion this guy took to the face, and his face is like burnt off slightly. He looks insane as he's charging at Ida. Ida's like, oh my god. <laughs> he's just like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna fight that. He basically trips Deku to fall onto right in front of the bomb as he reaches up to try to touch the bomb. Ida um, kicks his hand out of the way. As Deku flips back over, he enlarges his right arm, grabbing um, Ida's legs and chucking him across the room. Baku Deku, however, just used a lot of his power to try to do that gigantic throw and can't really make it to the bomb by that point. As he's like slowly crawling to the bomb, Ida starts fighting Uraka, who had started touching bombs around the room and makes them fall on Ida. As Deku touches the bomb, he, they win. That's the end of that. 
<laughs> so after that, Bakugo still says that he was cheating and shit. He's like, it's your fault for charging straight at my hand. That's like saying it's your fault for running straight into my hand when you punched me. I dragged you to the dirt, there's a difference. Into a cl concrete wall? They, they go back and forth about this for like hours on end in the middle of school. And <laughs> there's this Aizawa left like, <sighs> I thought this would fix this. But mm, me, it seems to have made it worse. Anyways, thank you for so much for watching that world. And I'll see you somewhere. Sometime. Goodbye.